he needs me, Ariane realized. That's why he sent for me. I could tell Marcella what to say, but why should I? A spasm of anger rippled across her father's face. I warn you, Ariane, I am out of patience. With me? Oh, that is so like him. For Lord Tywin and the Lannisters, you always had the forbearance of Baelor the Blessed, but for your own blood, none. You must take patience for forbearance. I have worked at the downfall of Tywin Lannister since the day they told me of Ilya and her children. It was my hope to strip him of all that he held most dear before I killed him. But it would seem his dwarf son has robbed me of that pleasure. I take some small solace in knowing that he died a cruel death at the hands of the monster that he himself begot. Be that as it may, Lord Tywin is howling down in hell, where thousands more will soon be joining him if your folly turns to war. Her father grimaced, as if the very word were painful to him. Is that what you want? The princess refused to be cowed. I want my cousins freed. I want my uncle avenged. I want my rights. Your rights? Dawn. Huh. You will have Dawn after I am dead. Are you so anxious to be rid of me? I should turn that question back on you, father. You have been trying to rid yourself of me for years. That is not true. No? Shall we ask my brother? Tristine? Quentin? What of him? Where is he? He is with Lord Ironwood's host in the Boneway. Oh, you do lie well, father. I will grant you that. You did not so much as blink. Quentin has gone to Lise. Where'd you get that notion? A friend told me. She could have secrets, too. Your friend lied. You have my word, your brother has not gone to Lise. I swear it by sun and spear and seven. Ariane could not be fooled so easily. Is it Mer, then? Tyrosh? <laughs> I know he's somewhere across the narrow sea, harring cell swords to steal away my birthright. Her father's face darkened. This mistrust does you no honor, Ariane. Quentin should be the one conspiring against me. I sent him away when he was just a child too young to understand the needs of Dorne. Anders Ironwood has been more a father to him than I have. Yet your brother remains faithful and obedient. Why not? You favor him and always have. He looks like you. He thinks like you and you mean to give him Dorne. Don't trouble to deny it. I read your letter. The words still burned as bright as fire in her memory. One day you will sit where I sit and rule all dawn. You wrote him. Tell me, father, when did you decide to disinherit me? Was it the day that Quentin was born, or the day that I was born? What did I ever do to make you hate me so? To her fury, there were tears in her eyes. I never hated you. Prince Doran's voice was parchment thin and full of grief. Ariane, you do not understand. Do you deny he wrote those words? No, that was when Quentin first went to Ironwood. I did intend for him to follow me, yes. I had other plans for you. Oh, yes, she said scornfully. Such plans. Giles Rosby, Blind Ben Beesbury, Greybeard Grandison. They were your plans. She gave him no chance to reply. I know it is my duty to provide an heir for Dawn. I have never been forgetful of that. I would have been wed and gladly, but the matches that you brought me were insults. With every one you spit on me. If you ever felt any love for me at all, why offer me to Waldo Frey? Because I knew that you would spurn him. I had to be seen to try to find a consort for you once you'd reached a certain age. Yes, it would have raised suspicions. But I dare not bring you any man you might accept. You were promised, Ariane. Promised? Ariane stared at him incredulously. What are you saying? 
Is this another lie? You never said the pact was sealed in secret. I meant to tell you when you were old enough, when you came of age, I thought, but I am three and twenty. For seven years, a woman grown. I know. If I'd kept you ignorant too long, it was only to protect you, Ariane. Your nature, to you, a secret was only a choice tale to whisper to Garen and Tyene in your bed of a night. Garen gossips as only the orphans can, and Tyene keeps nothing from Obara and the Lady Nim. And if they knew, <laughs> Obara is too fond of wine, and Nim is too close to the Fowler twins. And who might the Fowler twins confide in? <laughs> I could not take the risk. She was lost, confounded. Promised. I was promised. Who is it? Who have I been betrothed to all these years? It makes no matter. He is dead. That left her more baffled than ever. The old ones are so frail. Was it a broken hip, a chill, the gout? It was a pot of molten gold. We princes make our careful plans, <laughs> and the gods snatch them all awry. Prince Doran made a weary gesture with a chafed red head. Dawn will be yours. You have my word on that. If my word still has any meaning for you, your brother Quentin has a harder road to walk. What road? Ariane regarded him suspiciously. What are you holding back? Seven, save me, but I am sick of secrets. Tell me the rest, father, or else name Quentin your heir and send for Hotar and his axe and let me die beside my cousins. Do you truly believe I would harm my brother's children? The father grimaced. Obera, Nim, and Tyene lack for nothing but their freedom, and Alara and her daughters are happily ensconced at the water gardens. Doria stalks about, knocking oranges off the trees with her morning star, and Elia and Obella have become the terror of the pools. He sighed. It has not been so long since you were playing in those pools. He used to ride the shoulders of an older girl, a tall girl with wispy yellow hair. Jane Fowler, or her sister, Jenilyn. It had been years since Arian had thought of that. Oh, and Fryn, her father was a smith. Her hair was brown. Garen was my favorite, though. When I rode Garen, no one could defeat us, not even Nim, and that green-haired Tyroshi girl. That green-haired girl was the Arkan's daughter. I was to have sent you to Tyrosh in her place. You would have served the Arkan as a cup-bearer and met with your betrothed in secret. But your mother threatened to harm herself if I stole another of her children, and I... <coughs> I could not do that to her. His tale grows even stranger. Is that where Quentin's gone? To Tyrosh? To court the Arkan's green-haired daughter? Her father plucked up a Sivasi piece. I must know how you learned that Quentin was abroad. Your brother went with Cato's Ironwood, Maester Kedri, and three of Lord Ironwood's best young knights on a long and perilous voyage, with an uncertain welcome at its end. He has gone to bring us back, our heart's desire. She narrowed her eyes. What is our heart's desire? Vengeance. His voice was soft, as if he were afraid that someone might be listening. Justice. Prince Doran pressed the onyx dragon into her palm with his swollen, gouty fingers and whispered, Fire! and blood.